So I thought I'd start with a little joke. I haven't done that for a while. I always do this for Joe. Joe likes the jokes. So I want you to have a laugh before we start getting heavy here uh, today. And um, I think I've done this before, but it's so good. I thought uh, it was a good to repeat. It's called Cheap Pastor. <laughs> a cheap pastor had a church with significant need for a paint job. The estimate calls for 100 gallons of white latex paint, but he decided to buy only 20 gallon uh, and then kind of thin it out with water. <laughs> so he diluted one to one and still coats, uh, looks like white to him. So he dilutes it again and stretches out the paint as much as he could do. So he painted, uh, diluting it to about 20 to 100. As he finishes, a dark cloud appears, a torrential rain washes all the paint away, and a voice calls out, repaint and thin no more. <laughs> Laugh while you can. <laughs> uh, I laid the foundation a little bit last Sunday for you that was here. Um, so let's go into this idea of what does it mean when it tells us that Yeshua, Jesus, the great teacher, said, John 17, 11, I am not in the world. What does that mean? But he talks about those that are in the world that has been given to him. He says to this father in prayer, I want you to take care of them while they're still in the world. So we're going to talk about that just a, a little bit. One other scripture I want to give you is Revelation 18 that says, Come out of the grasp of deception. Now the King James Bible says, Come out of her and be ye separate and be no more partaker of her sins. But in the Mirror Bible it says, Come out of the grasp of of deception so you need not in any way participate with her plagues so there is a place I don't know what the scripture meant but I always liked it it says there's a place that the vulture's eye has not seen you know vultures kind of look for death but there's a place there's a place and I want to find that place, and I've been looking for that place for over 60 years. And I've tried out many schools of thought, many, as you know, that know my story somewhat of 60 years, know that I've been in a lot of different movements and teachings, a lot of different churches. I moved to a lot of cities and a lot of different states kind of trying to follow where is the it that I'm looking for that it of the absolute moment when you totally awaken yourself. And some of that that I experienced, of course, dabbled into more Eastern thinking, which we embrace in new thought and metaphysics often. Oftentimes we meditate to Eastern type music, which I find easier than using Western music because my, my Western music uh, is downloaded in my brain so if I get into Western music, I get into emotion or a feeling or a memory of when I was breaking up with somebody or when I was falling in love with somebody or doing something, and I get knocked out consciously. But in Eastern music, I didn't have that download, so it was able to steal my, my thinking process easier to go deeper into meditation. So the more that we get away from the conceptual mental constructs that we have downloaded, the better that we can get through, just like Paul was talking about, get through that critical mind and get into the, the deeper aspects of ourself. In Eastern teaching, it's often said and used the term that the world is an illusion. I also ran into that as I became a student of A Course in Miracles through Marianne Williamson back in the 80s. One of the first things in A Course in Miracles, which is where people are about ready to throw the book away, is the first exercise that has you look at a chair and tell you that you realize that there is no chair there. 
And people go, really? Are you kidding me? Way with that. Because we all struggle with things that we think we see and hear and taste and smell and touch. We think that is reality. But that's gone. And uh, it's taken a long time in the West to even come to this idea of a world of illusion or a world that is a simulation world. That the world itself can be possibly a giant computer that we're all living in. And in that computer is many downloads. The download of religion, the download of education, the download of science, the download of most everything we have bought into outside of ourselves, and downloaded it and qualified it as a belief and construct in our head. And the more we've done that, the more filters we have made. Until everything that we experience out here is filtered through those filters or senses, we call them, the five senses of how we see, how we hear, how we feel, how we taste, how we, all, all, all of them are filters. So let me just share a little bit where I am after 60 years of this, <laughs> this preaching and researching and looking and you know, there's a scripture that says uh, at po some point, even knowledge can make one weary. <laughs> I think it's in Proverbs or as, as one of those poetic books that too much knowledge can make one weary. Yes. And sometimes I just get weary trying to pile on more mental ideas and concepts and exercises and this and that and another. I, I feel I've done most of all of them. I've been very open to do them. But there's something in me at this point where I'm ready to see the appearing, the manifestation, the coming of what is real into my mundane world. So I thought that was the answer. I thought the answer was somehow to get fixed in the world so I can be a better person in the world. And that's what I have followed, ways in which maybe I could be better and still stay in the world. I don't know that I feel that way right now. I may change. But I feel like when the teacher said, I am not in the world, that he was saying something profound, that he had found a way out of the simulated world that human consciousness had made for itself. The world is self-made. It's not just there. I know it appears to be just there. Education is just there. Religion is just there. But you can understand where all these things came from was from the mind of, of mankind. Man has made religion. There'd be no religion without man believing in religion. There would be no Baptist church, Catholic church, or any other church until there was people to believe in it. It has its start in the belief of the people in the teachings of the dogma or the doctrine of it. So it doesn't matter what you deal with in this world, it is a man-made download in the great computer of a simulated world that we're living in. A few years ago, a movie came out that changed a lot of thinking. And that was the Matrix movie. How many of you have seen the Matrix It's not an easy movie to watch. You need to see it more than once, definitely. But you need to see it with some understanding because it's a prophecy. It was a prophecy that needs to be fulfilled. And we are here today to begin the fulfillment of the prophecy of how that we can get out of a simulated world that is man-made and how that we can get into reality. Mm -hmm. 
and truth. And that's what I want to be into to talk about a little bit. I can't be the only one who wonders about the nature of reality. I can't be the only one. And I'm finding out I'm not. The more I've gotten into this, the more people that I'm finding out there that is also questioning what is the nature of reality. Has contemplated a new possibility that everything we perceive and experience might be nothing more than an elaborate illusion. So I'm going to welcome you this morning to the rabbit hole of exploring the concept of living in the matrix where the boundaries of reality blur and conventional notions are challenged. Are you up for it? Because you will probably experience some resistance coming from your ego, carnal human mind in doing this. So let's discuss the idea of the world and could it be a simulated reality? that is causing us to rise with questions about the nature of existence. The term matrix has become synonymous with a constructed reality that deceives our senses. This is when you need your notebooks today. <laughs> but you can re-listen to this. Thank you, I see a notebook there. You get a star. <laughs> I'm going to read it again. The term matrix is synonymous with a constructed. In other words, it's a construction. It's a mental construction that comes from mankind itself. But it deceives our senses much like we saw in the movie trilogy of the matrix. So what is being challenged today is the question of authenticity of our perceptions and our experiences. Are we merely players in an intrinsically designed virtual world? Is our reality nothing more than an illusion designed to keep us confined and ignorant? Hmm. In the writings of the Bible according to the Apostle Paul, it says, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant. Now that's a harsh word. Because really what it means is I would ha not have you to be unconscious. It doesn't mean you're stupid, you're not smart, it just means that you're not aware. Are you with me? So I would not have you to be ignorant because if you do, the so-called enemy has advantage over you. So rather than give you more knowledge, let's give you understanding of the situation because the understanding is much more powerful than the knowledge. See, knowledge is a masculine thing, but understanding is a heart feminine thing. And when she understands the knowledge that's in his head, boy, can they get together and have pretty babies <laughs> called epiphanies. Moments of awakening. A moment the veil thins so much that you see a different and deeper reality. Now, 150 years ago or so is when everything changed, but it's taken us a while. We're slow. We're slow to actually uh, find new norms and new ways. So it's taken over 150 years, but starting with people like Albert Einstein, Max Planck, Carl Pribram, and I could go on and name so many. Now you see, if I talk about them, it's like, who are they? Now if I talked about Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel, Jesus, Paul, Peter, yes. Because that's in your history program. Hear what I'm saying? That's in your history program. But it's not about the history, it's about the mystery. 
And when the mystery of God is finished, time shall be no more delay, and we shall create portals and pathways that will usher in reality and swallow up the illusion in its presence. I'm excited about this. This is what I've been waiting for for 60 years. <laughs> so I left you last Sunday with some information that is very challenging. But let me give you a couple. You're looking at me here. But if I told you that what you see me as a full body, as David, is not out here, but you're seeing me in your own brain. Let me show you. This is science. Look at a person. The image of the person is really on the surface of our retinas, yet we do not see them on the retina. Rather, we see them in the world out there. So what would I look like if I was just a created image of myself, for we were created in the image, remember? Created in the image of our creator. An image is an energy pattern. And in that pattern, there is such deep information. And it's no accident that all of a sudden, We've got this interest now in, in uh, sacred geometry and, and, and Fibonacci and golden mean that, that, that uh, Sandra's bringing to us in her classes. This is not by accident. This is, this, is, this is a timing that is happening. This is an opening of heaven. This is an opportunity for you to get out of the illusion of the matrix and get into the reality of the truth. And when you are, you'll be set free from all illusions of the world. But it's a challenge, I know. You stub your toe, you experience pain in your toe, but it's not really in your toe. It is actually a neurophysical process taking some place in your brain. All pain that you feel in your body is in your brain. I just recently found a new chiropractor that fascinated me, and I'm about worn out with chiropractors, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into some of them. But this guy was different because he does something called zone therapy, in which he understands there are six zones in the brain that controls everything in the body. And he treats you from these zones in the brain. I said, wow, this is no accident either. He's got it. So everything that's showing up for me is telling me that I'm going in the right direction for me. And I'm just sharing this basically uh, with, with you. In the movie, they were offered a red pill and the blue pill. Anybody remember that? So the blue pill would allow you to experience only the illusion. In other words, you're satisfied staying in the world. You're satisfied in going through all the things of the world and just kind of having a faith and a belief that it's going to change someday, but it doesn't. So you can have that pill today. You can just stay. I'm saying where I am. I'm comfortable, and I'm going to keep trying to fix it. I'm going to keep trying to fix my world. How can you fix an illusion? The only thing you can do with an illusion is dispel the illusion and swallow it up in victory. <laughs> That's what it means in the Bible. It said, and this mortal shall be swallowed up in immortality by the quickening of the spirit of Christ who raised him from the dead shall also raise you from the death Amen. of your yes. true spirit and self. Some of you still are trying to find out who you are. <laughs> and you won't find it probably in the world. Now a lot of you already are not of the world, but you're still in the world. And there's a, and there's a purpose. I don't want to get on this long. But uh, there, there, there's a reason why 
you are experiencing what you're experiencing in the world to prepare you to help other people in the world when the great exodus happens and it's close. Yes. Oh yeah, in my spirit I hear, I hear God telling the children of Israel and telling Pharaoh, let my people go. Say it with me. Let my people go. They've been 430 years making bricks for Pharaoh every day and going to maybe Sabbath school and going someday in the sweet by and by we're going to go to the land of milk and honey. And God said enough of that. I'm going to harden old Pharaoh's heart and he's going to drive you out. And there's some things in your life that's getting ready to happen if it's not already is saying it's time for you to get out of the matrix and out of the illusion and get into the land of truth where the milk and honey flows for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you can take the red pill. Now this has nothing to do with politics, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even go there. The red pill is understand what was occurring outside the illusion that was created by the matrix. So you can stay in the, in, the, in the matrix or you can learn how to get out of the matrix. Now what I'm excited about is how pieces come together and integrate themselves to be greater than the sum of the parts. So as you know, 23 years ago, I was given this combination of frequencies. I mean, what an experience. It was when I got the download about the solfeggio frequencies, the six frequencies that had been kept secret and taken out by the church out of the Gregorian chants because of their power to empower people toward moving from humankind to Godkind. And when religion decided in around 315 AD that no, we're going a different direction based on fear, they got rid of everything that would have empowered the people through sound and vibration and put it aside. Hit it down in the archives, <laughs> down in the basement of institutions. Tried to hide it from the people, but I'm telling you, what's in your spirit, they can't hide it. <laughs> and it's time for that which has been done in secret to be revealed and shouted from the housetop. So I have dealt with these frequencies for over 23 years in the form of tuning forks, which kind of went into um, ways of teaching and training people for the purposes of healing um, uh, uh, on, on, it really was made to work with the etheric part of ourselves. So my question is, was I given the keys to the kingdom? Jesus said to Peter, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Now, I, my brain sees a key other part of my brain says, no, there are musical keys. The key of C, the key of F, the key of D sharp, the key of this. So is there a combination of keys or sounds or frequency combined together that opens up a portal between the matrix and reality? Heaven and earth. I say yes. I say yes. No accident that we brought bowls in, that we brought sound and vibration and frequency into heart light. It all is not here by accident. But it is here to get us back to a starting point of recreating ourselves of who we can be outside of the matrix as a new creation in Christ. The next stage of humanity. If you think this is it, if you bought into the belief that God created this, <laughs> I feel for you. 
<laughs> and I know we've tried to make every excuse why we have inferior bodies from a, a, a creator that we try to make perfect and whole and, and, and all power and all intelligence. But you don't have to do it anymore. Because your body did not come from a spiritual creator. It came from your mom and dad. <laughs> And that which is of the flesh is of the flesh, it says. And that which is of the spirit is of the spirit. We make bodies. We were given the ability through the intelligence of our evolutionary journey on how that we can multiply ourselves. And if you want to be real biblical about it, you can go back to Genesis where it says that God says to Adam and Eve, go and multiply. I'm giving you the way to multiply bodies. The trouble is, there should have been in there and use it wisely. <laughs> Somehow that got edited out. And we just started using it for the pleasure of the second sacral. <laughs> Not saying that's bad, but I'm saying, I'm sorry. And I've mentioned this so many times here and I get, but people don't like it. But you've got to be careful what souls you're dragging in and incarnating that's not in time with their incarnation. And this is where you find those that you look at them and you wonder, is anybody home? <laughs> people that have no conscious, conscience, people that can go out and just shoot a bunch of people and feel nothing about it. These are displaced souls that have come in because somebody made a body and they had to be drug out of the spirit world before they were prepared and ready and came in angry and dis <sighs> disconnected to their purpose for being here. This is why sometimes even you can have several children and sometimes you've got one that's wonderfully adjusted and beautiful and wonderful and you got one that's just don't know what to do with them. <laughs> so I'm not trying to get personal on that. I'm just saying that sometimes I can answer the question why things are the way there is. I do believe there is a season and time for everything. And you that are here and adjusted into the spirit world are here because you were called in to incarnate at this time. That's why life is working different from you. That's why you have a different perception of the world in yourself. This is why you said in those churches you were raised in and said there's got to be more than this. This is why even when your parents said you're getting into the cult and getting into wrong stuff, you'll win anyway. Uh, well, you that read books out of the Bible, oh my God, how blasphemous was that to read something that wasn't in the Bible, but you did it anyway. Because you were born conscious. Yes. <laughs> you came in through a different portal. And I could get into that. That's a whole interesting teaching within itself. So as I stand here before you looking solid, how many knows that if you were looking at me, my body, through an electron microscope, I would not look like this at all through that microscope? because it would see a deeper identity of me that would be even smaller than the atoms of my body. You see, for a long time, we believed the smallest thing was an atom under old Newtonian science and all of that. Well, that went out the window 150 years ago with, with Einstein and all those who begin to be the fathers of quantum thinking. If I say quantum, oh, lightning did not strike you. <laughs> you need to learn about the quantum world because you happen to live in one. And you're not going to understand things. And people are being pushed right and I say, I just don't understand what's going on in the world. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Because we've got to understand it on a quantum level. So as we begin to go deeper, we found out and proved that nothing is solid that seems to be solid. So if you could see me right now, if Tim, you want to show him the holographic mental interference, this might be more what I would actually look like. Weeks, okay. 
How many of you ever seen angels or people from the other side? They weren't solid, were they? No, they were just a bunch of energy patterns because they've left the 3D density of the body, which is kind of a almost prison that spirit dwells in. It gives it confinement. And that's why there was a need to move a lot of you into energy work and spiritual work because it took you beyond the density of the dimensions of the body and made a larger dimension for you to work with in yourself. So most likely, if you were seeing me like this, you would just see nothing but waves of energy. I'm just waves of energy. But the fact that you're bringing me through the filter of your five senses to see me through your eyes, you see me as I am really not at all, but as I appear to be to you. Hard. <laughs> To realize it could all be in our head. Do you love when the doctor says it's all in your head? Next time say, thank you for recognizing it. <laughs> You're a good doctor. <laughs> this is called morphogenesis of dynamic reality. All right, let's take the eye. I'm, I'm trying to give you some examples to show you scientifically that what I'm saying is a very big possibility. How do we see the world outside of ourself. And any eye doctor will tell you this, that the actual image of the tree goes through the eye upside down. So if you were seeing physically, I would look totally upside down to you. <laughs> but the brain redoes the tree into a final image of what the brain sees it, not as it is and what makes it up, but out of what it appears to be when you learned what a tree looks like. You see a tree as you know a tree to be. It becomes solid in you. So, heavy, told you. So in the original matrix, the protagonist is invited to choose between the red and the blue pill. Again, the red reveals the world of what truly is an artificial construct of machines which have enslaved humanity. The blue pill allows the protagonist to remain in a comfortable delusion spared from spacing the horrors beyond. In other words, don't want to do the shadow work. Don't want to go in my subconscious, our unconscious self. We have to be willing to do that. So not being in the world is a big thing. So we experience material reality in the form of separate objects. I'm here, you're there, the chair is there, this is there. That was undone by Einstein's protege, David Bohm. You need to know about David Bohm, B-O-H-M, uh, Bohm. He gave us uh, a lot of truth and reality. I appreciate these events, but I'm still going to perspire to get this out. I'll show you that. Um, so let me read you something. This will mean none, nothing to you, but Carl Pilgrim made the discovery that settled that the brain visual systems works like a frequency analyzer. Now, I'm going to give you something else that I experienced this week. I've been having a little bit, maybe of the start, it could be of tinnitus. I don't know, because I have to discern is this a physical thing or is it a spiritual thing? Am I picking up higher frequencies? So that is your responsibility that you have to sharpen your discernment to know which is which. 
But if you're running to doctors and they're saying, I have no, no uh, solution for you, most likely a spiritual thing is going on. If it's a physical thing, yes, you go find a, a caretaker that can help you on a physical level. Nothing wrong with that. Don't disregard either one. But discern... Where is the issue coming from? Is this a spiritual thing that is happening to me, or is there something that's a malfunction in my physical or mental self? Then you want to treat it accordingly. You want to be smart. Be smart who you go to. Be smart what practitioners work with you, or doctors, or chiropractors, or people like that. Be very careful that you're still in alignment with what is going on to you in the sense of the wisdom of the experience that you're going through. So I went to, had ear done and all that. So of course I, I give these doctors a run for their money <laughs> when I go in. And uh, I was telling her about uh, neuroplasticity. How many's heard of neuroplasticity? You should know about it. Neuroplasticity is the proof that nothing is set in stone in the sense of our brain. It's not there forever, but it can be changed. A trauma in the brain, you don't have to live with it the rest of your life. You can literally change that trauma and be free of it by changing neurons and whatever. In this case of tinnitus, it has to do with about 3,000 little hairs that are in the auditory system. And sometimes when we get older or whatever reason, we tend to, um, to get older. <laughs> Things don't work the way that they once did. But these little hairs are like an antennas that interprets the sound I hear out here into my brain. Now this could be something that's important in understanding Alzheimer's and all kinds of dementia and stuff like that that is going on is to understand how this thing is working in the sense of what is interpreting your world that you live in. So these hairs are antennas that takes the information of the sound and interprets it to the brain. So again, and she admitted to me, it's not your ears, they were fine, it's your brain that is not receiving clearly the message of the sounds outside yourself, especially high sounds for me. I don't do high sounds well on the chart. But we continue and adapt it to try to fix these things with third dimensional techniques and things instead of understanding where all of this can change from the place of cause. So there's a frequency analyzer that senses frequency and is a measure of the number of oscillations and waves undergoing per second. So everything you're hearing right now is an oscillation of vibration per second called a hertz. There's a hertz that's going on. And if that gets out of tune, then you don't see well, you don't hear well, you don't do certain things well because you're not in alignment with the actual uh, wave uh, movement. This strongly suggests that the brain may be functioning as a hologram does. In 1979, a Berkeley neurophysicist, uh, gives it the name, not important right now, made the discovery that settled the matter. In the 60s, it was shown that brain cells in the visual cortex is geared to respond to different patterns. Some brain cells fire when the eye sees a horizontal and some in the eye to vertical. So all the vertical waves that make me up is how you will see me out here. Some brain cells fire when the eye sees a horizontal pattern, some fire when they see a, a vertical, and so on. Brain takes the input from highly spatialized cells called 
feature uh, technology and some fits them together to provide us with a visual perception of the world out here. So the course of miracles wasn't near as wrong as we thought for you that did not follow through on, on all, of, all of that. Oh, there's so much I want to get into. In fact, I think we're going to um, do this as a Wednesday class for a while. And for you that want to really take the time to go into uh, these things. One thing in the Matrix that I noticed this time that I watched it was they knew when the powers to be. Now, this is a new thing for us. This is a new challenge for us who have wanted to buy into everything is good and everything is God and all of that. And I don't know what to do with that yet. I'm still wrestling with all of that. Uh, uh, can I deny that there's e not evil in the world? No more. But the thing about evil is it is self-made evil. We're not the victims of evil. We're the miscreators of something that we perceive as evil in the world today. It has come from our split mind because we believe in good and evil and this and that and whatever. And we've projected that out into uh, a collective consciousness that at some point starts to materialize into things. This is where you get uh, people who talk about demons or devils or uh, bad spirits and little entities and things like that. It's like they're just out there looking for us. No, we have been a part of that and that's why we're not victims to them but we hold the power of changing what we have done to ourselves in that way so I don't want to overdo here this idea but it's quite fascinating what else do I have that I wanted to show you um, I think I hit everything so our brains mathematically construct objective reality by interpreting frequencies that are ultimately projections for another, uh, another dimension, a deeper order of existence that is beyond both time and space. The brain is a hologram, and we need to talk about that on a Wednesday meeting. What is a hologram in the holograph universe? Conclusion. This made Bohm realize that the objective world does not exist, at least not in the way we are accustomed to believing. That is out there, what is out there is an ocean of waves and frequencies and reality looks like to us only because our brains are able to take this and blur and convert into sticks and stones and to other objects. I knew this was going to be a challenge. Don't think I'm not challenged with it, but my spirit is witnessing with this idea. But in the movie, what they said was interesting. They always knew when the beings, and that's another thing we need to talk about, who's running the show? Who's running the matrix? You can't deny that. Who's running this thing? Who has technology and the power to make this world and do these different downloads that keeps us enslaved? That needs to be talked about at some point. We've, we've touched on it, but we haven't really dealt into it the way that I, that I want to. I've tried to show you in the Bible uh, and this is, this is an important thing uh, that started this with me many years ago, over 30 years ago, that I was told to take the first of the Bible, the first of Genesis, look up the words that are in English into Hebrew, and then find the English equivalent of the Hebrew word, and take it and look it up in a Webster's Dictionary, and I would find a hidden code. So I started out in the beginning. So I started out with beginning. 
First of all, it should not read in the beginning, because you, when you read it that way, you're reading like the beginning of everything. No, it should be in a beginning. It's a plural Hebrew term that means in a beginning. So it doesn't mean there wasn't something already here. It means but something was beginning. It's a beginning. In the beginning, God. Oh, that was a big one. God. God. What does that mean? So I looked it up, and it said Elohim. There's no word God. That's a transliterated term that's been put in the Bible. There is no original word God at all. It's what we chose to call God in the matrix. Uh-oh. So you got a God of the matrix, and you got a true creator outside of the matrix. Most people have bowed down to the God of the matrix. Now you might understand my message, who's your daddy? <laughs> now you might get it. When Jesus told them in the matrix, you're of your father, the adversary, but my father seeks you to worship in spirit and truth. Because why? Because he said, I found the way, I'm the door, and you are going to find the way out of the world, the matrix, the simulated world, because of my teachings and the vibration of the teachings that are there. Unfortunately, Christianity did not emphasize his teachings, but teach about him. All you got to do is just believe in Jesus. Just believe in Jesus. And you're healed and saved and sanctified and on your way to heaven. But they never got into his teachings, and especially the teachings that were edited out of the 18 years that he's disappearing out of the Bible. Come on. 18 years, there's nothing from 12 years old to 30 years old because he was out in process. He was out being taught in Nepal and India and different uh, schools of, of wisdom he was preparing himself. He was learning the way. And he came back in here and says, I got the way, and you can get the way too, and do the same works that I've done, and even greater. Yeah. All this will start making sense to you when you understand this matrix idea that Jesus metaphorically now hear this, metaphorically, archetypally, mm. archetypally, <laughs> is me outside the matrix. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jesus is you. Now, Jesus, when I say Jesus, I'm talking about the body. So Jesus is, a, the body is 3D, but the Christ was 5D. Uh oh, we won't get heavy. <laughs> the 3D Jesus body came in and said, but I'm the Christ. There's a part of me outside of the world, outside, but I need to keep a 3D body so I can be the way and the truth for people to find a way out. I'm a door. Today we'd say a portal. So, <clears throat> Elohim was an interesting term. I studied it and looked it up, what's translated God, because you see, they wanted to make God anthropomorphic. You know what that means? That means a God that looks like us, the old man, the old white man out there in the sky. Yeah. So it had to be, I am the Lord thy God and I am one. Mm. See how the ego borrows the truth that we are one, but makes it one out there that you're not? He's the one, but you're not the one. So you had a need of a savior because you're not the one. You're not a part of the true one, but you are to worship the one and only God. So the word Elohim, first of all, I found it to be plural. It's kind of a 
plural singular term. It means one but made of many. Many make it one. So it's a group. <laughs> Translated, look it up, gods. G-O-D-S and goddess, male and female. Where do you think people, when people say, where is God? They look up. In, they look up in the sky. We think God is up there somewhere, out there somewhere. So we, we think heaven and God all have to do with things above us. And the reason was is because the Elohims came out of the sky and landed on the planet. Are you ready? <laughs> now, I, I got about 10 minutes here, so I'm going to do this. I'll quit. So, now, the Elohims also, which means gods, which is also a wonderful translation of uh, Psalms 82 that says, Don't you know the world is off course? Know ye not ye are gods? Why do you die like the princes of the world? Why are you not being the children of El Elyon the Most High? That's some of the powerful little eight verses that's in the Bible is Psalms 82. The world is off course. In other words, you've done it. See, we want to pray, oh God, help, the world's off course. No, God is praying to us. It's off course, what are you going to do about it? That's what it says. It's what it says. How long are you going to accept the persons of the wicked? How long are you going to accept the persons of this? How, are you going to, how, are you, how long are you going to accept what you've done to this world? Don't you know who you really are? You're not the children of this world. You're the children of the most high God of the Melchizedek order of an endless life without mother, without father, without descent, without race, without gender. You are a spiritual light being. Feel the power. Feel that power. So, really, the Elohim's. Oh boy, this is this is powerful. So now you you've got you've got uh, you got the always. I like somebody wrote wrote the fact of who God is as the always, <laughs> because you you. And you know this, I can't define it. I can't define the infinite. I can't define what has no beginning and has no end. I can't do it. I, I don't know what to call it. I don't know what to label it. Every time I give it a label or a word, I capture it and confine it. And it's beyond anything that I could say. Now, we're comfortable with saying it's some kind of an intelligence. And how we know that it's an intelligence is because how the pattern of nature works. There's some intelligence within all nature, within your body. There is always an intelligence that's working. That's why self-healing is possible because you have an intelligence in your body how to heal itself. But you've got to create the right environment for it to happen. And that's another story of epigenetics. But... It's all about the environment. The environment's right. That's why it changes. Things bloom because the atmosphere changes. Now when it gets colder and the atmosphere changes, that'll all go away and things will look like they're dead, but they're not. But they'll go into another cycle in a different place. So for, I want you to imagine the infinite without, without beginning or end, birth or death, uses vibration for itself to define itself. So it becomes not a universe because we keep saying the universe. You can't say the universe anymore because now it's the multiverse. There's not just one universe. There is multiple infinite universes. See, this is the new word that's out there. That you got to catch up with. <laughs> catch up on the news. Quit watching CNN and, and, the, and start watching the news that's going on in you. The Holy Spirit's got some news for you. <laughs> so it used it to become in the infant universes of the world. 
Then it became, used its density of frequency to define itself as a galactic. All the galaxies could hold it. And we keep finding, what, 200 million galaxies? I mean, it's just ridiculous. There's, there's no end to galaxies now because they hold the infinite. And then it became solar, and the solar became. Finally, it reached a density where it could be held on a planet. And it became planetary. For whatever reason, Earth was chosen to be that place for it to land itself on the planetary level. Now, I'm not saying things aren't on other planets, but not on this dimension. That's why they don't see them when they get there. Right. If they would get on the frequency, they might be surprised what's there. Right. <laughs> but the earth became a place. And, and oh, oh. <laughs> so that's why I, I don't mind God, G-O-D, as a acronym for Grand Organizing Designer. That I can handle. God is a grand organizing designer who's designed. He is the, in, it is the intelligence and in everything that becomes a pattern and materializes itself is through the intelligence that it is. So the Elohims were to be, another definition, magistrates, representatives of that which is infinite on a planetary level. <laughs> It was a good thing. The Elohims were good. But the thing was, because Creator did not want to make us to be robots, He chose to make Earth a free will zone planet, which has now made it the hottest piece of real estate <laughs> in the whole galaxy. Souls are lined up to get here. Because through free will, you can choose how fast you can grow and awaken. And some will take bodies that are not the most healthy. They'll come in and stay a while. They'll take anything they can get to get into the earth because this is where you can use consciousness to grow and you don't have to wait for evolution. <laughs> stay with me. I know it's late. So because the Elohims came to a free will planet, they made a different choice to who they wanted to be. And they chose they did not want to represent anything. They wanted to be the thing they represented. And they usurped the idea of the true creator being to become the God of this world. They brought with them great technology to manipulate DNA. And if you really study and find this, that they're finding places in our DNA that's been skipped, changed, and added to. If you bought CRISPR, I mean, you heard of CRISPR. Okay, got one. CRISPR. See, all these things are out there. I'm trying to tell you about them. <laughs> the CRISPR is what's dealing with DNA and telling us what's going on with DNA and how, how we can change all these things. And what, what's the real story that is behind these things have definitely shown us that we've been tampered with in our DNA. This is why DNA work is so important, which we, of course, offer in Soma Energetics. Phase three is DNA activation workshops. I've been in that since the 80s, as far as DNA work, because it's the blueprint. It's the planetary blueprint that's been messed with. <laughs> and what vibration and sound is going to do is change the etheric blueprint in enough of you that it's going to shift and change the blueprint of the planet. Come on, light workers, gather. Come on, 144,000. Come on, you that are called and chosen. Come on, call, come on, and join yourself together, you that have a longing and a thirst in your heart 
that you don't understand what it is. If we come together and reach critical mass, we will cause a planetary shift. Thank you. So the Elohim's, the Elohim's um, divided. There was the Elohim's that says, okay, I want to stay true to my mission. I'm going to represent the divine creator that sent us. And the other said, no, we want to be that. We're going to use serpent. So there was a split of the Elohim's. And we call them dark Elohim and light Elohim. Mm. And the dark Elohim in some way banded the light Elohim's into star constellations. Pallades, Orion, you that as a child looked up into the sky and said, take me home. <laughs> or watched E.T. Phone home. And you felt a longing somewhere down deep in your soul somewhere that this is not my home. I'm just a passing through. <laughs> I sang it last week. I may sing it again. This world is not my, I've known that from the time I was a little baby, that I do not fit in this world. I was not born for this world. I was born of God, and therefore he that is born of God is born without sin. I did not ever have sin in the first place. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I've chosen to be a part of the light Elohims that are gathering themselves around the world today, and that's not what you're seeing. You're not hearing about that, but it's happening. Yes. It's the 144,000. Now, the 144,000 is not 144,000 people. Don't project that on a body. 144,000 is a frequency. Yes. No. One plus four is five plus four is nine, zero, 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 nine, which is completion. So when I was given this, I said, what, is the, what am I completing? It said, all your incarnations on 3D, no more coming back into the matrix. No, no more coming back. No more incarnations. You've got to learn how do you get out of the world. Using Jesus as my example and sample, he said this, I go to prepare a place for you that where you are, where I am, you shall be also. Jesus, the Christ, moved his 3D body into 5D and there can still work with us in 3D until we raise our vibration to match his and we become the collective Christ in the world. Thank you. This is an exciting time when you get a hold of this. You know, I wish Heart Light was some little feel-good metaphysical church to come and, you know, get some positive feedback and all that, which we, we do. We try to do that. But it's more. But it's more. You see, you've got to understand, you are the result of your stories. Whatever story you have in your head, that's what... You're becoming. you got to change the story. we got to change the story at Heart Light. I've been trying to change the story of religion most of my life. Because it is, it is trying to keep us enslaved. Amen. How many millions of people do you know that's enslaved in the religion that they belong to? Talk about a cult. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Religion is a cult. Yes, it is. If anybody's saying that about heart light, you don't know us because I am not a cult leader. <laughs> I'm trying to empower you, not take your power from you. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Oh, our time's up for now. <laughs> but ponder and contemplate upon this thing. Look it up. There's some wonderful research. You'd be surprised how much this is growing in the understanding of living in a simulated world that man has made in its fallen state and now fallen victim to. But in the midst of that, there is a people. <laughs> I want you to hear me. There is a people within a people. 
there is a remnant of people that possibly some of you finished your incarnations and chose to come back as teachers. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. We don't have a word for that, but the, the Buddhists do, called the Bodhisattva. A Bodhisattva, someone that has gone through in the, all the cycle of enlightenment, but chose not to stay in that state of nirvana, but have incarnated to come back and help teach people and help them. This is why we need the classes. That is why we need, and I've told you when I came here five years ago, I don't want you to be under my ministry. I want you to be with me in the ministry. I want to help you. You to go out of here and you find people and they open their heart and they ask you something. I want you to be able to minister to them and meet them on the level in which they are. You don't have to stand up here. You don't have to have a, a church or a center. You can ha be in the, in the grocery store in line and somebody for some reason turns around because they're, they're attracted to you and says, how are you today? And opens the door because they're ready for a little more light. Yes, it's not by accident who is drawn into your world. So let us contemplate upon this subject. I'm out. I'm just out. I think I've been out to some degree for a long time. I think that's where my ministry is and why a lot of people don't understand it. Uh, a lot of times it's because I preach more out of the matrix than I do in the matrix. So come out. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Angels are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. I can't remember the words. The angels beckon me to heaven's open door. Oh, I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord. No, I have no friend like you. Heaven's not my home. Then what will I do? The angels beckon me to heaven's open door. And I can feel at home this world. I gotta sing it one more time. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. Heaven's not my home. Oh Lord, what will I do? All the angels beckon me. Heaven's open door. Oh, I can't feel that. No, I can't feel that. No, I can't feel that. No, I can't feel that home in this world. Come out of her, my people. Be ye no more partakers of her. I, I got to finish this. This is important. What in the movie that interests me is they knew when a new download was being put in. Yes. And I've been feeling it since March that those in controlling the matrix is put a new download into the matrix that is causing. All that is going on today is a new download. But I'm here with a different download. <laughs> See, the Holy Spirit's been giving me some downloads that's not in the matrix. And if you'll join me, we'll start bringing in heaven as a download into earth. And when heaven gets into earth, it shall be done on earth just like it is in heaven. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, wow. I'd like to be in your heads when you leave here today. And you're thinking, what in the world is that man talking about? Stay with us. This is another step for heart light. I feel it. Get ready. We're going to a different level. You're going to a different level. And I want to welcome all of you to the quantum world. Microphones. Everything that's working up here is because of quantum. That's when things got smaller. Remember your old records? They don't last long. Now you can put bunches of stuff on there 
because when things got smaller and more toward the quantum level, more information could be imprinted. We'll talk about that because that's the iron in your blood. <laughs> yes, the iron in your blood is getting a new download of new data from heaven. And I'll leave you with that. Let us pray. Let us confirm, affirm. I always at this point feel not enough because I don't have enough words. I don't have enough language to always expound what spirit is trying to say. And even going through this made me realize why that we have dabbled into this gift and art of gosalalia, the speaking in tongues of light language and how important it is because it's out of the matrix. When you're speaking spirit, light, sounds, and there's no words in your brain, the brain will shut down. All the filters will fail. All your old belief systems that are not in align with your divine intelligence will completely surrender and every knee in your head shall bow and every tongue shall confess the Christ mind that is in you. Holy Spirit, we do look to you as our true teacher, guiding us and leading us through this challenging time that you've brought us to here at Heartlight. Help us. Don't let us fall into that part of the brain that says we're not intelligent enough, smart enough, trained enough to understand this kind of language. We have to get out that the only language is Bible language and, and religious language, but there is a new language, a new tongue that is being born today. Help us to learn. Help us to surrender to the Holy Spirit. And so it is. Yes. Blue pill or red pill? Which one do you want?